In addition, we've done our own librarian survey this fall in September and October. Um, we had a great response rate, mostly from larger academic libraries, um, um, those with um, pretty good sized budgets um, who tend to subscribe to a fairly large proportion of ebooks. And we asked them a lot of different questions, um, but I'll just highlight a couple of things that we learned. Um, it's a little hard to see here, so I'll read out what the question was. Uh, in your opinion, what are the most common methods your users use to discover ebook content? So these are asking librarians what they think their patrons are doing in terms of finding ebook content. And the top two sources that they felt that users um, used were the library catalog and the library website. And actually, this has been backed up in, by other studies, some of the ones that I listed earlier, that in fact, library sources seem to be where find, users are finding um, ebooks. Uh, what's interesting also, though, is, is that internet searching and uh, recommendations, online bookstores, all of these other sources aren't far behind. So there aren't any clear winners here, um, but the, the, the top sources are library systems. Um, another interesting aspect of this, though, is that a lot of users just don't use library systems. So to them, those ebooks would be invisible if their primary uh, resources are Google and, and some of the ANIs, they're not going to find those ebooks. Um, the question here was, how do you find and learn about ebooks? So this is a question asking librarians how they find out about ebooks, where they look to, uh, to get that information. Um, the top three sources here are book vendors, um, uh, inclusion and content packages or bundles by the live by the publishers or publisher marketing materials which I found was interesting so the efforts that publishers are making to get uh, information out there about ebooks seem to be working fairly well we're also doing interviews with students um, we're starting with those on the Stanford campus but we'll be branching out and let's see if this uh, video will work Um, I've compiled the, yeah, there we go. Google Scholar. Google Scholar. Google Scholar. A lot of us use Google Scholar as sort of a, a good starting point. I'm looking, one, to see what Google Scholar produces, what, what Google Scholar comes up with. But the other is I'm also looking for things that might not yet be peer-reviewed literature. So I'm also looking to see if there are any, you know, um, conference reports or, or websites related to these things. So if the books didn't pop up with a direct link to Google Books, would I look elsewhere? Um, probably not <laughs> the way that, because I don't actually have it in my mind that a lot of books are available online. There's a couple ways that I find books that I'm looking for. One of them is actually just in the reference section, in the um, sources cited sections of journal articles. I actually prefer Web of Science to Google, Google Scholar, which is not that common, <laughs> I know, but uh, I, I find that Google Scholar often is, is spotty and th things get in there for, for strange reasons and I feel like the web of science is more, con it's more transparent. A lot of the really important books are, you can find on Amazon for less than 20 bucks. And that's usually worth it to me to um, not have to worry about having to renew books or take them back. So I went to a professor and said, I want to learn about biogeochemistry, what do you recommend? And he gave me some suggestions. I do go to Amazon for when I'm looking for textbooks to try to figure out what are people using, what's the standard. I got the list of books from my advisor. I, w I went online to look at uh, to look at the prices of them because I I actually really like writing in books. The Library of Congress system works pretty well. There's usually stuff on the shelf near what I'm looking for that I want. Flip side of that is that I don't necessarily always use the books that I get out of the library. What I what I really love about libraries is the ability is the fact that you see more than you would if you're just looking for something on a computer screen. I find that when I when I don't know what I want, that that search engine isn't as helpful to me. Um, Socrates I end up using more when I know that I'm looking for something very specific. I know the title of the book that I want and then I want to see if Stanford has it. 
I've seen a Kindle. I've never tried to actually read on one, but everything I've heard actually is that they're fantastic. I mean, I love the idea of it, and somebody told me that they were coming out with one that was big enough to get a, an eight by eight and a half by eleven, and that you could put your PDFs in it. Um, and especially if there was a way, actually, probably only if there was also a way to take notes. Um, but that would be really appealing. Uh, I'd like my computer. I like it a lot. <laughs> if I did have the technology uh, where it was convenient to to sort of read an ebook like that, uh, I think I'd probably be more um, open to accessing those those resources. But uh, at this point, it's not really uh, strongly in my um, my research. Um, Process. One way that I think that I would be more likely to look at ebooks is if chapters were separately available and either downloadable as PDFs or you know, potentially as HTML, um, but some way that I could get at what I thought I wanted um, pretty easily. A big way to get more books in front of me would be to improve the ability to determine what's inside the book which right now is based on title and author mostly, and so maybe adding keywords or adding some other way of, and then and ideally if they, were, if they were together with articles, so you would get both and maybe it's, you know, you get two columns or two colors or whatever it is, but, but that it comes up with, at the same time, the articles and the books. To get more book content into my workflow, kind of going directly from, from what I was, was just saying, that. To, to integrate the searching in articles and in books. So that's that's part of the issue is to have the high quality search engines. And maybe, maybe I just don't use Google Scholar properly, um, but the, the, the search engines that I sort of trust more, they're separate. So I, I search an um, article database for periodicals, and then I search the Stanford Library System for books. And so they're, they're two separate steps, and I, and I often find it's often the case that finding books on your topic is much less clear than finding articles, because articles have keywords. For me, what's been really revolutionary about um, journal articles online, even over the six years that I've been at Stanford, I've seen more and more uh, journals go online and that their back inventory has gotten bigger. So when I started, I, I did spend a lot of time in the library photocopying articles. And now when I see something, if I can't get it, electronically, I'm much less likely to go find it unless I know it's something that I need. Um, but the easy, the easy access of online accessibility makes me much more likely to check something out. So what are we learning from these students? Um, first of all, they're not really sure where to look. Um, and uh, what we've heard through the surveys that I mentioned, as well as these interviews, is that um, they'd rather miss the content um, than, than try to alter their search behaviors in many cases. So ebooks are getting overlooked and they're not getting found um, unless, unless the, the, the user is specifically trying to find them. Um, what I should have prefaced that video with was that we, in addition to just discussing with them what their, what their concerns were and what their behaviors were around ebooks, we gave them a little assignment to try and find specific ebooks to kind of get their the, prime the pump, if you will, on, on, on thinking about this. And they all managed to find the ebook, but I think that um, that they, uh, they they're clearly interested in being able to combine the behaviors they use to find journal articles with the behaviors for ebooks um, and, and and so forth. Um, they have established search behaviors, and unfortunately, right now. Ebooks don't always fit into those behaviors. Um, so, you know, the, the one young woman said, maybe I'm using Google Scholar properly. Well, no, Google Scholar doesn't index books. Um, and so, you know, not, not being clear on that means that you're not necessarily going to find a lot of book material. Um, another theme that we've heard over and over again is, is that books, if they're chunked at a, at a more granular level, become more useful. Um, and that they'd like to see, as I said, journals and books a little bit more integrated. 